I'm Gabby and I'm a wet and wet oil painter and today I want to talk about sand. So I'm going to do a lesson on how to make sand, how to make it more realistic, and how to sort of not overthink sand. So let's get started. Here on my canvas I have it um, pre-gessoed, right? And this half of course is black, this half is white. And I did that because I'm going to do sort of a number of different pictures. So this is just going to be like a practice canvas. and. Um, Definitely, if you've never done sand or if you're having a hard time with sand, don't be afraid to do a practice canvas. And then once we're all done with this canvas, um, I'll go through how I'm going to very quickly wipe it out. And then I will be able to paint on this canvas. So what do I have for paints? Well, let me show you. Sorry, I have some really runny paint here. Okay, so on here, really quick, I have silver. This is an apricot color, and this one is also sort of an apricot. This is a um, like transparent teal. Um, burned umber, burnt sienna, white, and then this is a um, like smoky gray color. Now you don't need to have all of those colors. You just need to have, you know, basically something that you're gonna use for sand. And sand color can be something as simple as just white mixed with a little brown. It does not need to be a peach color. However, I do find if you can get like a flesh color or a peach color, it actually makes life a lot easier. Okay, now this whole thing is really dry right now. I'm not going to be painting um, skies in this. I'm going to be painting sort of the water where it meets the sand and then the sand, because obviously sand is our focus today. Um, and I'm just gonna grab a little bit of paint thinner on my brush, okay? And I'm just using an angle brush. And we're gonna work on the dark first and then on the light. So I'm gonna move the camera, so just give me a second. All right, so I've added some white to that water so we can sort of see that it's water, right? Nothing too particular. And now it's sand time. So I'm gonna take a flat brush, nothing special. And the great thing about painting on black canvas is that black sort of does the work for you. Now, I'm gonna use that black to my advantage, but what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this um, sort of apricot peachy color that I have here, and this blue stuff I have going on over here is leaking like a sieve, so I'm gonna use a little bit of that oil um, because I don't have you know wetness put down on my canvas. And then I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that burnt sienna, or burnt umber, excuse me, and I put the burnt umber on one side of the brush, but not on the other. Now, sand is never just Black, something to keep in mind. I like to think of the sand as sort of waving a lot like the water because after all it is the water that makes the, mo or the movement in the sand to begin with. So I did it a little bit darker and now I grabbed a little bit lighter peach color without grabbing um, any more of that brown. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of white. And that was super, super simple to do. And that's all it took. It's about making it darker, closer to the water, and then lightening up as you come away, but not filling in everything. If you make it all the same color or all sort of one solid thing, it's not going to look like sand. It's going to look really fake, okay? Now, if you wanted to, you could take a brush and you could sort of blend it in. So part of making sand is actually not making sand. I'm gonna grab my knife. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. And I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of it on the back of my knife. Okay, and I'm gonna go along the water. And I'm just gonna lay down a little bit of a sort of water line. When you do this, by the way, your knife is not perpendicular to the canvas. It is actually tipped backwards like this, okay, so that that paint can rub off the back of the knife. So I did that, and then I'm going to come out over a little bit of this darkness, and I'm going to do another one. And you don't want them to be like one line straight, one line straight. Move them around, have them meet up a little bit. But you have to think of this as like the water that is sort of pushed up, and it's already receded, and it's just sort of left behind. 
You take a little bit of that and pull it backwards. And then you have sort of the water coming up to shore. Very, very simple to do. Now, next, uh, I'm going to do a little bit more water for my next little beach thing that I do here. So we'll just keep on going. Now, as I said, we're not going to put any sky into this picture. And I stick by what I said. However, we're going to put a little bit of reflection of that sky into the sun. Now, let us just use our imagination for a little bit, and we're going to pretend that above this sky is a nice, pretty sunset with some oranges and yellows. Okay, so you put in your sunset, and then as you're doing that, you're also going to be putting um, some reflected color down into the sand. When I do this, this direction. Okay? So vertical lines. Lift this up a little bit more. And again, keep in mind that my canvas is dry right now, so it's going to look a little bit not so easy as I go through this process because the uh, um, he doesn't want to spread onto the canvas. And I did that on purpose so that I can sort of work with what I want to work with as I go. This reflection stuff is easier to do, by the way, on a black canvas, because what it sort of does is it sort of washes out that color, and that's what happens to when the light hits the wet sand. So now we sort of have the light reflecting, but it's only going to reflect again on the white part of the sand. I'm going to grab some white. And that's a really simple way, too, if you don't want to have much movement in your water, just to put in a white line and then just pull back from it. I like to think of these sort of um, water waves as like my Oregon Coast wave. It reminds me of like watching water rush up onto the beach on the Oregon Coast. Not that I've been there, but it's on my list and I've seen the beach. Okay. Now we have our water, of course, and we have our sand, and it's reflecting the light. That's all fine and good, but the thing is not all that sand is going to be wet. So you sort of have to decide where your sand is going to be wet, and then grab some paint. I'm going to grab again some of that peach. Maybe I'll add a little bit of white to it. Okay? And I'm going to deliberately decide where my sand is going to start being um, dry. Okay? And you can do your whole beach with the color pulled down by the And that was it. It was just a few brush strokes over the top of that other stuff, and then it covered it up. And it made it look like sand. Now, as you can see, I sort of dabbed, sorry, I sort of dabbed my brush instead of sliding it there because I wanted to have more of a visible sort of line. Okay? And then I'll sort of blend it out. And then you sort of have a roll in your sand. Sand is a really cool place to get depth in your picture very easily. So it's something just to sort of keep in mind. 
So, like I said at the beginning of this, don't take sand too seriously, okay? Darker close to the water, lighter as you move away, and not one solid color. You can use some brown, some white, some peaches, some whatevers. We have a little bit more room um, down a little bit lower, so I'm going to move the camera again, and we're going to focus down on this sort of bottom corner that you guys can't see, and we're going to get one more beach out of it. So just hold Here it. we are in that last little bit of um, canvas I have left. I'm going to make a little bit of water here. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of white so that I can sort of show where this is. Now I have the water sort of coming up to my beach. Now, I'm going to use this black really to my advantage here. I'm going to grab a different brush, just another flat brush, nothing special. Grab it here, right? Nothing special. And I'm going to use silver. And the silver that I'm using is made by Windsor Newton, and it's one of their professional colors. And I know that this is going to be impossible to see, but this paint is actually iridescent. It sparkles. And I love doing this with gold or doing it with gold closer to the water and then doing it with silver, both of them sort of iridescent. Okay. And I'm going to go away from the beach and then I'm going to drag back into the beach. These iridescent paints um, don't work if you start to blend them with opaque paints, but if you blend them, you know, either onto canvas that doesn't have anything on it, you know, like a black canvas. Otherwise, if you blend them with um, um, like transparent colors, they can do some really, really cool things. And you could do this with just gray as well. And it gives us a really simple sort of beach. And it's sort of shimmery. And then I can come back in as I come forward and I can start to maybe put some peach. And I have a really simple beach. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some more of that white that I have. It's got a little bit of blue in it. And I'm going to come forward onto some of this again, like I did before. And there will be a little bit of sand that you can see behind it, and that works really well. Most important part of this, really, is to get into your head that you don't want to take sand too seriously. Okay? And don't ever underestimate what your water is doing in order to make your sand look like sand. Alright, so that's sort of the black canvas version of this. We're going to move over to the white and then we'll get going on there. I'm going to lay in some water really quick. Now painting on black canvas sometimes takes a little bit of creativity, but it won't take you long after you start doing it to realize that um, painting on white canvas sort of starts you off at a disadvantage because then you have to put in the dark. So I have my water here, okay? Now before I really get that water super close to shore, I need to start adding some dark into my sand first. So I'm gonna take some burnt umber. You could do this with black, you can do, do it with burnt umber. And I'm gonna come sort of right along where I want that water to start. And to start with, I'm putting it in sort of very dark but I'm not making it dark for a long time. I'm making that dark sort of narrow, okay? And then I'll have little bits where that dark sort of comes out. If you want it to look like there's a little bit of a sway in the sand as you're coming forward, you can make some lines that are sort of just almost slightly like happy face, but not too much, okay? Now 
Now with my canvas really bone dry like this, I'm able to sort of get this sandy look. Now if that canvas was wetter, Okay, and then we tried to put stuff over the top. What ends up is you start to end up not having the, the texture, which is fine too if you want to have more of a smooth looking sand. But if you're going for really sort of a almost sketchy type of sand, by doing it on a completely dry canvas, you can get a totally different look and that's what I sort of wanted to show you there. Now as you move away from the beach, you can start to add in some of these lighter colors if you want. You can deliberately put white in. So we have sort of our dark, that's how you do your sketchy. If you want it to look more smooth, you know, have either some liquid clear laid down. Um, if you put white down first, you're gonna end up washing out your sand. So I would really suggest when it comes to doing a beach that you either have minute amounts of liquid clear or nothing at all. And then if you feel like you need to add the white to it, you can. Um, it's really easy to wash out your sand, so you want to sort of avoid that if you can. Now let's say we're working our way forward and you want to have some distance in your sand. Okay, so we have this lighter color. I'm going to come back in here with some sort of dark color and I'm going to make like a little hill. And all of a sudden that is sort of in front of all the rest of that. And just by doing that, I have pushed that beach further back. Now, if you want to sort of have some validation on that, I could say that I'm going to put like a little palm tree here. This is about creating distance, by the way. Hold on. I'm going to grab a different brush. Okay. So, distance is sort of key when it comes to painting. So, I'm going to put in this skinny little thing here. the wrong brush. Okay. And I'm going to paint a palm tree. Okay. Now, not that brush, this brush. Now on this hump over here, I'm going to paint a palm tree and we're not going to see the top of this palm tree. But just like that, we've created some major depth in our picture, okay? So it's about making layers, making sure it's not solid, and then you can put stuff in. I also like doing things like sand fences, and I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but you know, by having a sand fence that comes forward, you can create depth really fast too, okay? Let's move on to our next little segment of beach. I'm gonna grab some more of that teal. Teal is the theme for the beach today. Now white is sort of a better place to show you um, sort of the consequences of doing beaches a certain way and then how to fix them. So here we have our beach, right? And then I'm gonna grab some of that apricot peachy color, okay? And without trying to grab too much of that blue that's behind it. Now, to me, beaches are almost hard to screw up. This one's a little screwed up, but the, the thing about it is this back here is still darker, right? Because we started there and then we worked our way down. Okay, now to me, that looks very, very fake. Okay, problematic. So to fix that, we could take some of that blue in there what to call it, but that's what I like to sort of think of it, and to blend the sand and the water together. And that sort of makes it look a little bit more natural, but it's still missing something. And that is why you don't want flat color for your beach, okay? So if you ever do do that, it's a super, super simple fix. You just come in with some dark.
And don't be afraid to push that brush down hard as you do this. So we've already kind of created something that works a little bit better. And then if we start to bring in maybe like some white and we sort of create a barrier, it creates a mound of sand that is falling sort of in front of that other sand. And then just by having that top part sort of lighter, it sets it apart. Just like having it as a, a hill coming in front of it darker sets it apart. Now, if you look at this and you say, mm, it still doesn't look quite, you know, not quite what you're going for, I'm going to grab some black. Now, they say, you know, that you should basically make your black. You shouldn't really use black. There are certain things where legit black actually works very well, and this is one of those places, okay? Because I don't want color in that sand. I don't want to have a rainbowed beach, okay? I want my sand to look somewhat natural. Just like that, you have water and you have a naturalness. Now, the one thing that this is still sort of missing is some definition to the front of this. See if I can do this without totally screwing it up, okay? Again, what we do with our water will affect how our sand looks big time. Okay, do a little bit of a water line out here, bring it back in. And just like that, we have something that looks a lot more realistic. Now I know that none of these are perfect. Again, that's not what we're going for. It's more about kind of figuring out how to make sand look like sand. All right, we're gonna move down to the last little section that I have, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about um, a little different sort of technique for sand. Now we have our last picture here. And actually, I'm gonna grab a little bit more color because I'm out of my teal. And the first color that was available in my pile of paint was uh, French Ultramarine. So that's the color we're gonna use for this last little bit of beach that we're going to do. Now, if you want to, you know, have a lot more distance in your picture, one of the best ways to do that is to not have a lot of water, okay? You can set your water further away. And that itself will create a certain amount of depth to your picture. All right, now I'm gonna take some of that black again. I'm going to create like a path in the sand. Okay, the trick to creating paths anywhere, anywhere, is to have them more narrow and make sure that they work themselves out. And they don't work themselves out and then sort of straighten out. They have to continue to get wider and wider and wider as you come out. Now, if you do this part back here where it's too wide, the sand can cover that up fairly easily. So let's do that. I'm gonna grab yet another paintbrush. I think by the time we're done with this, I won't have any clean paintbrushes, but that's okay. And I am going to grab some color. I'll grab some of that peach. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of brown, maybe a little bit of white, okay? And I'm gonna start back here, and I'm gonna drag over to onto that path, okay? And this is one of those things where sometimes you'll end up having to sort of wipe your paintbrush off. Now this stuff is all dry, which worked really good for the path. And now my paint has a little bit thinner in it, okay? So it means that I can sort of come over the top of it. And I'm just sort of crossing over, but not filling in all the parts. You know, you want to have some variation. And as I come closer, I'm going to leave more of that sort of sketchy, dried out path stuff visible. Because it gives it texture. Painting is, is an illusion, and so make sure that you're using those illusions to the most of your advantage. That's really one of the easiest ways to paint. Okay. And laying sand is, you know, just like laying any other kind of ground that you lay, you wanna think about, okay, which direction do I want the ground to be going, okay? 
we want this to be sort of a beaten down path. And so to do that, I'm going to create a downward slope. Now I'm going to cut this path off basically completely to look like it sort of disappears behind the sand that's even closer to us. So I laid down sort of a darker color, but it's also a different color. I use like a burnt sienna, so it's sort of a different um, hue altogether. And then if we want, we can take that trail and we can make that trail sort of go off this direction. Okay. Cause then it's not like a straight trail and it's kind of doing its own thing. The glory of oil paint is it's uh, very forgivable. So if you do something that you don't like, it is easy to fix stuff. Even if it's in the sand, by the way, don't ever under underestimate the value of blue paint. And that is where this sort of gray blue color that we pulled out before is going to come in. And again, you don't need to have a gray blue color. You can easily make a gray blue color. I just happened to have it and I knew it was oily. So I knew I could sort of get it to move around a little bit more with this dry canvas I was working on. Okay. Maybe I'll grab a little bit of darker blue, maybe a little bit of black. And then we're creating it where the light is hitting more of this part and then it's more in shadow down here. And now that I created that hump, what I'm doing is I'm going to take some dark, right? And I'm going to pull it back sort of a different direction. And then I've created not just one layer, but many layers in my paint. When you think about sand, don't just think about sand. Think about the stuff that you can add to the sand that will make it look more like sand. But in the end, don't overthink. There it is, top to bottom, there's our sand. This is the black, this is the light. One thing I didn't do is I didn't do like a reflection of light on the sand on this white stuff. Um, now we'll do it, we'll do a little piece over here, okay? Now the thing is when you have light reflecting off of sand, <coughs> excuse me, when you have light reflecting off of sand, okay, the sand is usually going to be darker in general. But that's all you do. Again, it really does help if you bring it down vertically like I did here and then cover it up with um, a lighter color in front of it. Anyway, so there's our collection. You can see what doing dark does. It gives you a much more evening looking sun, um, sunset type of beach in the sand, okay? And then light, this is a much more daytime sort of sand. Think about your water. Don't overthink your sand. Don't make it all the same color. And that's it guys. So any questions or comments, concerns that you guys have on that, if you wanna fire them my way in the comment section, I will definitely do my best to address them when I see them. Um, and yeah, don't, don't take sand too seriously. I love beaches and beaches really are once you figure out how to paint water, how not to overthink the sand, and then how to do a palm tree. And they make for quick, fun pictures. And if you haven't watched my video about pine trees and palm trees, check it out because I do really dissect how to make my palm trees and they are super easy. Okay, guys, I'm Gabby. Until next time, I really do hope that you fall in love with oil painting just like I have. So I almost forgot to show you guys this. I promised you that I would show you how to sort of get rid of this once you're done, right? Even though it's kind of fun, I like my multi-beach picture. Um, I don't know that I want to wipe this out, actually. I really like this. Um, I think it's great for examples. But what you would do, okay, I'm not going to wipe it out, but let me show you what you'd do. You would take some paint thinner, and this is just some dirty old paint thinner, okay? And you want to do this while it's wet. And you will take it and wipe it out, wipe, and just keep on wiping, okay, until it's all gone. And then blend it together until it's sort of a homogenized color. Now with me doing black, what I probably would do is I would blend in this side and I would blend in this side and I would still try to make this look dark so that I could eventually turn this into a beach picture. 
but I actually think I'm going to keep this because I think this turned out really cool. So um, if any questions on that particularly, and then put them in the comment section as well. So anyways, thanks guys. Bye.